welcome back to Back Max I. And in today's video, we're going to be making some nickel oxide thermite. And we're going to do that with some nickel sulfate, uh, sodium carbonate, and aluminum powder. So the process that we're going to use is turning the nickel sulfate into nickel carbonate with a double displacement reaction. And then we're going to decompose the resulting nickel carbonate into nickel oxide, which we can then mix with some aluminum powder to reduce it to nickel metal. I totally know what I'm talking about. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is weigh out some nickel sulfate and just weigh out uh, some into this little 25 milliliter beaker because I don't want to use that much nickel sulfate. I'm really just doing this for the chemistry or like the demo really of the nickel oxide thermite. I'll just put some into here, see how many grams that is and uh, yeah, figure out the stoichiometry from there using this article from Wikipedia. Alright, so here's uh, what I'm following. Basic nickel carbonate can be made by treating sol... <laughs> Basic nickel carbonate can be made by treating solutions of nickel sulfate with sodium carbonate, shown here for the basic carbonate. Four moles of nickel 2 plus plus carbonate ions uh, and some hydroxide as well as water equal the basic nickel carbonate and then we'll just uh, decompose it like that. Alright, let's get to it. I think we're gonna take an intermission because the ground is getting all wet and it's raining on my calves and you can't do chemistry when you're just getting rained on. Okay, there's going to be a thunder sound in a second, no doubt. Oh. <laughs> Alright, final mass is 16.15 grams. Alright, thunder's still roaring, but um, I just did some more calculations and it uh, comes out that I need 4.40 grams of sodium carbonate. Um, like decahydrate, yeah, that's that's the that's the formula. So, yeah, I don't really want to explain it. Like, just trust. And then if our yield is low, then then you can criticize me. But all right, four point four grams. Oh, this bitch just died. Um, let's continue with the iPad. Alright, so I set up again because it got really wet over by my lab and uh, the sun has come out again. Wow, it's really... I purposely spilled the smaller beaker into the bigger beaker and now we're going to carry out the reaction in here. So let's just dissolve this nickel sulfate in as little water as possible and um, as well as dissolve this sodium carbonate and then we'll combine the two solutions until they form a precipitate I mean it's pretty straightforward as you all know uh, then we'll filter it and heat it on the hot plate to decompose the carbonate to oxide uh, let's add 100 milliliters of water
All right, now theoretically, the solution should be almost not green because all the suspended particles of nickel carbonate that are green should be in the filter paper, and all the nickel 2 plus ions that were in the nickel sulfate would be in the nickel carbonate, and that would only leave a filtrant of colorless like appearance. So perhaps I'll add some more sodium carbonate and see if it reacts. All right, so I just decided this is probably way too much basic nickel carbonate to uh, put in a beaker and heat up. So I'm just gonna spread it out on some paper plates and dry it first and then decompose it later in the week. All right, so it's been a week, and uh, the nickel hydroxide has just dried, and I scraped it off the filter papers and put it into two separate uh, plastic containers. Uh, the one on the left is looking a little green to me, so I think it still has some nickel sulfate, so that's why I separated it. And the one on the right looks like it's fully converted to nickel hydroxide, but in order to tell, I'm going to now crush up both samples in mortar and pestle and compare their colors. Alright, I did the best I could and I got them as fine as I could as well. Turns out that the one that I suspected has nickel sulfate is actually a tad bit brighter. Another source of like the brighter green color could be like a hydrated form of nickel hydroxide. So what I'm going to do now is combine both of these and heat them in a beaker on a, my hot plate I think. Then that'll turn the nickel hydroxide into nickel oxide and then we'll be able to react it with aluminum. All right, here's the new setup. There's no bottom because I don't have a uh, like a ring stand, so I'm just gonna use my test tube clamp and hope that it doesn't fall out while I'm heating it. this is good we successfully made nickel oxide but bad news is the beaker is in the process of fracturing so uh, you can't heat it up to the decomposition temperatures of nickel carbonate and then just let it cool down to room temperature uh, this beakers trash now yeah at least we got the product this is like a it was 10 beakers for $30 so it was a really good deal and uh, farewell 300 mil uh, let's see the mass of the nickel oxide we collected. Alright, I'm calling it at uh, 7.3 grams. Alright, I just did the math, and in order to form as much nickel metal as we can out of the 7.3 grams of nickel oxide, we need 
six grams of aluminum. Uh. Perfect. All right, so after deep consideration and getting loads of shit over the years, um, I've decided to mix my thermite today with the paper folding method. I'm not gonna grind it in a mortar and pestle. I'm not gonna mix it by smashing a hammer into the mixture. I'm not gonna mix it by using a lit wooden splint. All right, I'm gonna be safe today. Here we go. Alright, so what just happened was, I just spent five minutes doing this Because I didn't want to, I did this, I straight up, look at all this shit. I went back and forth, back and forth, doing that because I didn't grind up the aluminum powder before I weighed the Or like, combined it with the nickel oxide. And I had to crush all these baby lumps. And... Alright, that's enough. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna light it now. <laughs> Yes! Hell yeah! 0.6 grams made that difference, guys. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, I can't see it all. Woo! I began to like pick out some globs that I knew had nickel in them, but then I realized I, I should probably just take the lazier way and just dissolve or chuck all the slag, including some tiny droplets of nickel, into a dilute solution of hydrochloric acid. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Add some distilled water. 